day on Rappler. The Supreme Court issues a temporary restraining order on the cybercrime law. Senator Angara says the Supreme Court will not strike down the cybercrime law. And U.S. President Obama loses his lead over Republican rival Romney in a poll after the presidential debates. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. In a unanimous decision, the Supreme Court issues a temporary restraining order and stops the implementation of the controversial cybercrime law. The TRO will last 120 days. The verdict comes on the same day the Justice Department begins consultations with various sectors to clarify the details of the law. Fifteen petitions filed with the court question the constitutionality of the law. It criminalizes libel, increases penalties of crimes under the revised penal code one degree, and allows government agencies to collect traffic data. Lawyers and media organizations slam the law for its ambiguities and the power it gives the government to shut down any website. Last week, public backlash over the law spread on social media. Hacking collective Anonymous also defaced government sites as a form of protest. Human Rights Commissioner Coco Kisumbing praises the TRO and says it gives time for a, quote, sober and objective discussion for improving a law. It is judicious of the judiciary to issue a TRO. Because temporary lang naman siya. Eh. It, it doesn't, it's not striking down the law. It is still keeping the door open for discussion, for improvement, for any kind of refinement and further protection. So, Author of the cybercrime law, Senator Edgardo Angara, says the Supreme Court's temporary restraining order is a, quote, necessary pause that would allow people to think about the benefits of the law. He says the court may still uphold the law's constitutionality. Angara says, quote, they may find some provisions vague or maybe unnecessary, but I don't think they will ever strike down the law. The senator says he's open to amending the law, but says he wants to keep the online libel provision. Environment Secretary Ramon Pahez signs the revised Implementing Rules and Regulations of the Government's Mining Policy, Executive Order 79. Section 7 of the IRR was changed to address concerns of cement manufacturers about the, quote, collateral damage in the policy's no new mining contract scheme. The revisions come after mining companies blast the government for what they call the original IRRs, patently illegal provisions, including the renegotiations and the mining contracts between the government and miners. The Chamber of Mines of the Philippines says their members consider the revisions in the IRR, quote, ambiguous and asks the Mining Council for further clarifications. The Commissions on Elections grants a petition allowing media members to vote before the May 14, 2013 elections. The petition was filed in June by Romulo Makilintal, counsel for a group of media practitioners. Media members are usually assigned to gather news on Election Day, preventing them from voting. The petition only covers voting for national positions and not for local posts. The Comelec decision comes before the legislation for media absentee voting is passed. Multi-awarded movie and television director Marilu Diaz Abaya dies Monday, October 8 at St. Luke's Medical Center in Taguig. She was 57. The director succumbs to cardiopulmonary arrest after a long battle with breast cancer. Abaya is the only other female director who received four FAMAS awards for best director, making her, quote, the most awarded director in the history of the Philippine Academy of Movie Arts and Sciences. Social media users post reactions and condolences on Twitter and Facebook. North Korea says it possesses, quote, strategic rocket forces capable of striking the U.S. mainland as it responded to a new U.S.-South Korean deal to extend the range of the South's missile systems. In a series of bulletins released on the official Korean Central News Agency, the National Defense Commission also says Pyongyang was ready to match any enemy. Nuclear, this is, quote, nuclear for nuclear, missile for missile. The warnings come two days after South Korea announces an agreement with the United States to almost triple the range of its missiles to cover the whole of North Korea. 
The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council of the Philippines is preparing for South Korea's planned satellite launch later this month, which could potentially affect some parts of the Philippines. South Korea will launch its Narrow One rocket anytime between October 26th and 30th. They're expecting parts of the rocket to fall within Philippine territory. Maritime activities will be suspended and flights will be diverted in the Philippines to avoid the flight path of the satellite. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number four, head of the Visiting Forces Agreement Commission, Adilberto Adan, says Subic Bay could play a key role as a hub for American ships. Adan says U.S. plans to shift the bulk of its fleet to the Pacific by 2020 as it focuses on Asia would need natural deep water bays to dock its ships and submarines, characteristics Subic has. Subic, of course, is a former U.S. naval base and was once the U.S. military's largest overseas facilities. It has been transformed into a free port and tourism zone since it shut down in 1992. At number seven, a loan worth about 500 million U.S. dollars for the North Rail project is the newest irritant in the rocky relationship between neighbors China and the Philippines. Former Transportation Secretary Mar Rojas, as well as Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima, say the Chinese funds involved in the 80-kilometer North Rail project will be paid even if the project has been scuttled. China calls on the entire loan to be paid after the face-off of Philippines and Chinese ships at the disputed areas in the South China Sea. At number eight, months after developers noticed a code for a want button in Facebook's JavaScript SDK in late June, the social media giant confirms it is testing the new platforms which allow users to want, collect, or like a product. Facebook says it's testing the ability to share information about an advertiser's products through a feature called Collections. These new features could help Facebook play a bigger role in the online commerce market by encouraging its 1 billion users to buy products for their friends and by sending shoppers directly to online stores. And at number nine, it's time for a woman to win the 2012 Nobel, Nobel Literature Prize. This is the shared sentiment among literary circles in Stockholm where the October 11 announcement will be held. Among the women whose names are mentioned are Canadian short story writer Alice Munro, Canadian poet Anne Carson, and Egyptian feminist novelist Nawal El Sadawi. Male contenders include novelist Don DeLillo, Philip Roth, and N. Scott Momade. Only 12 of the 108 Nobel Literature Prizes handed out since the start in 1901 have gone to women. For the full top 10, visit raptor.com's The Rap. President Barack Obama loses a five-point lead over Republican rival Mitt Romney after last week's debate, with the two candidates polling even in the three days after the, the debate. In an earlier Gallup poll, Obama leads Romney by five points in the three days before the presidential debate. But three days after the debate, the two candidates are tied 47 to 47 percent. Obama still has a three-point edge, 49 to 46 percent, in Gallup's seven-day rolling average, which included polls before and after the debate. The poll is an early measure of the damage done to end Obama's lackluster performance against a more aggressive Romney. Every story on Rappler has its own mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click on how you feel, and your vote will come to the front page, the middle of the front page, to Rappler's mood navigator, which then po posts the top 10 stories that have gotten the most number of, of votes on the mood meter. It also crowdsources the mood of the day. If we take a look today, Supreme Court stops cybercrime law, issues TRO, the top story of the day, 89% happy, 3% inspired, 2% angry. Um, continuing from, from yesterday, we still have the Varsitarian slams pro-RH Ateneo DLSU profs, 67% angry, 18% annoyed, 6% happy. If you look at the mood navigator today, the crowdsourced mood of the day is happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, October 9th, 2012. This is Rappler's 100th newscast. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.